Things are pretty calm this morning here in central Tunis. Remember, uh, Esebsi's death wasn't unexpected. He was 92 years old, the second oldest uh, world leader after uh, the, the Queen of England. Um, but he will be mourned here. As you say, he was a popular figure, uh, a man who was seen as really unifying the country uh, after the Arab Spring uh, Revolution in 2011, when he went into uh, coalition with uh, the Islamists, even though he was an avowed secularist uh, himself. He ushered in a new constitution for Tunisia. He helped uh, improve women's rights in the country. And crucially, he is seen to be the political figure that has kept Tunisia by and large stable in the past uh, couple of years, while we've seen other post-Arab Spring uh, countries like Libya descend uh, into conflict. So he, there are many people here who are grateful to uh, Esebsi for the role that he's played in the country in the past couple of years. But crucially, what Esebsi has been unable to do is to uh, deal with the issue that was the, really the motor of the Arab Spring, and that is Tunisia's economy. It has been struggling for years now, and according to a number of metrics, it's actually got, got worse under Esebsi's tenure. Uh, unemployment here now stands at 15%, and that's rising from about 12% uh, two years ago. Uh, so the question for many uh, Tunisians here today is, while they remember Esebsi fondly, they think of him as a kind of father of the modern post-revolution uh, Tunisia, they want to know who comes next, and can that person fix the age? economy. OK. And uh, just tell us uh, how you expect events to unfold, Nadia, during the course of the days ahead. We'll have uh, Esebsi's uh, funeral tomorrow. And after that, the priority of the government will be ensuring a smooth transition uh, to uh, the next president. Now, elections were already supposed to be held in November this year because Esebsi said that he was too old to run again. Those elections have now been brought forward uh, until September this year. And who might it be who takes the helm as Tunisia's next president? Well, it could be Esebsi's son, Hafiz al Hasebsi. His uh, father installed him as the head of the Nidat party, of, of the party that he founded, uh, when he announced that he no longer wanted to continue the presidency. Now, he is nowhere near as much of a popular figure as his father was. It seems to be something like quite undemocratic that he's taken that place uh, at the top of the Nidat party. So it may be him, but that party split as well. Uh, the prime minister is somebody who seems to be quite a unifying figure here, who's already uh, thrown his hat into the ring for those presidential elections later on this year. It could be him. The other question is, what role will the Islamists play? They've played a crucial role in the past couple of years, working in coordination with the secularists of the presidency. Would they do something similar now? Would they act as a power broker uh, after those elections in September? So much as still to find out, but the priority in the, next, in the coming months will be keeping Tunisia stable and safe uh, as it tries to continue its transition here towards democracy ahead of those uh, second democratic presidential elections in September.